In this video, we're gonna take a deeper look into why that downswing element that you see in great golf swings is gonna be so beneficial to your distance and your accuracy. So here's our same golfer, same exact swing that we used in part one. Only in this video, we're gonna go one step deeper and overlay his pressure information. So what you're looking at, obviously, is his right foot over on his right side and his left foot on his left side. And we're gonna take a look at how those movements we discussed in part one, how the hip tilts, how the, the drift to the left, how all of those things coincide with his ability to generate club head speed and play out of the middle of the club face because speed out of the sides of the club don't really don't really do you much benefit we want to have speed out of the middle of the club face and that's what we're going to talk about in this video so as we start to roll him forward we're going to go to our same benchmark that left arm parallel if you recall he does not have or did not have a lot of mass shift to the right but look at how much pressure he has swung to the right foot almost 80%. And we've all probably heard of that classic 80-20 at the top, 80-20 at impact. It's not exactly true. You want that 80% or 75 or 70, depending on the player, to be no later than this left arm parallel. We have a lot of golfers that reach their maximum pressure to the right in here. So somewhere in this window is where you want that max pressure. Because again, we need time to get it from the left side over to the front side and then have enough time to transfer that in the club head speed. So he's done a great job shifting it over to his left, excuse me, to his right. And as we see, we start to take him up to the top of the golf swing and we see that drift, that fall, that little surf to the left side. We see something really cool happen. So he got almost 80% to his right foot now with a club still way above his shoulder, almost above his head, or club head and hands way up there, he has shifted himself or drifted himself back to virtually where he started, back to 50-50. And that's a really, really good spot to be in with the club still way up there above your head and the hands above your shoulder because it gives you so little to do with regard to pressure shift, with regard to lateral movement of all of your mass in the downswing because again we're way past the halfway point in our one second so this golfer understands how to kind of cheat that time to his advantage and recenter himself as we hope you do recenter yourself when that club's still way up there towards the top of the swing and then if we scroll him down to this left arm parallel spot that we looked at in the first video we see he's 70 30 so he's 70% on his left foot, just 30% left on his right foot. He is standing, starting to stand on that left leg and get that advantage. And we're going to see his hips level out right at around 77%. And this is where, if you remember from our knee flex video, and I'll put a link to that above, where his knees start to level out is where his hips start to level out and you can see how high the club head still is. This is where those ground forces, those torques and vertical forces really start to ramp up and peak. That's what's going to help you generate club head speed. But it's not going to do you any good if it's not early enough. And then if we scroll him down into impact, we're going to see the really cool part about playing out of the middle of the club face. So take special note to this number here on the left. So as the club drops into the delivery phase, and if you're familiar with radar numbers, this is pretty much about the time where you start to see the swing plane numbers and all of those things start to be read by the radar. I want you to take special note at how little his pressure moves, how much lateral movement he has in this delivery phase of the club hit. He goes from 81%, 82%, 83%, so he's moved it 1% when he's delivered the club. We've seen club golfers, amateur golfers, move it as much as 45% during this same window. 
It's no wonder why players like this are some of the best ball strikers in the world and why the rest of us have a difficult time finding that sweet spot shot after shot. And again, we're taking these measurements on a dead flat lie. They only get worse out in the real world. So the whole advantage of us shifting early well before the middle point of the downswing, shifting early by this left arm parallel, is that we can stop the shift, stop the forward movement, stop the slide, the drift, however you want to say it. We have a stopping point to all that. And we can deliver the club with very little lateral motion when it counts the most, when this club head is being delivered. And this is a great example that we wanted to share with you guys. And again, this is a concept that any golfer can do. It's not a tour player only type move. It's a timing concept, and it's just moving enough early to take advantage of it. And I know in, in recent times, the word slide or lateral motion in the golf swing has gotten a bad name. Every golfer that we've ever measured, and there's a lot of them, demonstrates a slide, lateral movement, translation, whatever term you're comfortable with, demonstrates that. The only difference is the best players do it early and stop it. It has an ending point. And the not so great players do it late and there's no ending point. There's a saggy left leg, bendy knees, sliding through the golf ball. And that's exactly what you want to get rid of. No one wants that. But to do that, you've got to start shifting over there early so you're able to stabilize that left side and deliver the club face squarely on the ball. And you can see that here, not only with the gears avatar and the hip tilts, but also with this pressure trace. Thanks for watching. This is part two of a two part series. Part one will be right here beside me. You can click on it if you haven't already seen it. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of your hip tilt and what you think should be happening in the golf swing relative to what you've seen here. If you haven't already done so, please click on the big golf ball. You'll get our latest information just as soon as it's released.